Hi, this is uh, Thunder at HolidiumLabs.com today where we have Maggie Hines taking on Sean David Morton on Strange Universe. Be an awesome show. Enjoy. Maggie Hines. We have Lisa from Reno. <laughs> we have Manny from Durango, Colorado. We have Dale from San Antonio, Texas. No, no. We have Chad from Oakland. We have Doug from uh, Coppers Cove, Texas. We have Thunder from Awesome Lake, Travis, Texas, my new home. Today's broadcast is being shot and recorded on our Ring uh, Central Network, which is powered by Zoom. And we made better. We encrypted it. Enjoy. I'll be multitasking in the lab. Oh, fuck. Uh, we got Clancy in studio now. Sugar decided to jump off the desk. And now we got Clancy. Clancy is my 23-pound uh, giant red boy who basically just like sleeps on my chest when I watch TV. So uh, anyway, so he's there now in, in studio. Okay, you got some... Um, Again, I'm not sure how much uh, 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 Rose Rose producing with one cheek now, but we have some breaking news. Is that the breaking news music? <laughs> that's, that's the one you get from one cheek row. That's it. I know, man. You got like a bucket in one hand, and you're trying to plug holes in a boat with another, and then. I got uh, a telephone handling that now. I broke out Roclone 29. Okay. All right. Well, I, I like Roclone. I like Roclones 27, 14, and 40, and uh, and uh, 18. I like those clones. All right. Just so you know, is that is that the best breaking news music we have? Uh, no, I'm sure I could come up with. No, oh, never. Never mind. Go back to go back to dumping water. Uh, here's a <laughs> now direct. From freedomslips.com, Sean David Morton with breaking news. Breaking news, here we go. Uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has fired the deep state intelligence shadow government seventh floor traitors from the State Department. So it's happening. The swamp is being drained. While Ooh. Rex was on his first overseas trip as Secretary of State, his aides, his staff, laid off. Most of the staff, what they call the traitor staff at the State Department on uh, on Thursday, actually yesterday, much of the, what they call the seventh floor staff. And the thing is, uh, everybody who says, hey, can you give me directions to the State Department? People say, just keep turning left and you'll find it. But the seventh floor staff who work for the Deputy Secretary of State for Management and Resources and the Counselor Offices were all told today that their services were no longer needed. This was reported by CBS News. So if you remember, the seventh floor of the State Department was the shadow government from October 17, 2016. And a new trove of interview summaries and notes from the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails lays out a series of allegations that could prove fodder for future attacks on the Democratic presidential nominee. One revelation in the documents came from an interview with an unidentified person who suggested that Freedom of Information Act or FOIA requests related to Clinton, went through a group sometimes called the Shadow Government. Quote, there was a powerful group of very high-ranking state officials that some refer to as the Seventh Floor Gang or the Shadow Government, and this group met every Wednesday afternoon to discuss the FOIA process, congressional records, and everything Clinton-related to FOIA congressional inquiries, the FBI's interview summary said. So basically... They would get together on Wednesdays to try to thwart anybody that wanted to actually get information about Hillary Clinton. So once again, the Trump bump made in America 100%, but they should all, various comments are they should be arrested as traitors. Uh, 
Let me see what else we have here. Uh, I say we need more about this. Let's purge the whole damn system of lifelong federal employees. Let them all see what the past administration has done to the U.S. job market. Good luck finding a job. Next department, long overdue and very good news. Hope the action was immediate and they were relieved of their credentials and escorted to the door by the U.S. Marshals. Um, a fool thinks himself to be wise, but a wise man knows himself to be a fool. Uh, it's kind of funny because it's got some rabbits in there. It's just kind of cool. Um, let me see anything else. Throwing them out, uh, uh, throwing them out to the the public to find jobs is torture enough. Imagine looking at resumes of lifelong federal employees, which which asks, "What did your job consist of?" Oh, um, denying FOIA requests and uh, thwarting the United States Congress, and uh, oh, and uh, making sure Hillary Clinton doesn't spend the rest of her life in jail. So uh, you know, so there you go. Uh, does this include Stephanie Powers and Nyland? If they uh, if they say if they stay, then nothing changes. Yeah, Victoria, Victoria Nyland. And uh, what you need to do is put the word out that he's found several. Let me see. What you need to do is put the word out that he's found several miles. Then say that a whole team of people get them polygraphs are coming in to test everybody in the building. Then see who doesn't show up for work. <laughs> That'd be funny. All right, I'm not sure if we have Maggie on the line. Do we have Maggie on the line? Did she call? Did she figure it out? <sighs> well, all night. Where did the phone come in? Okay, all right. Well, I gave her the number. I told her to call about uh, about 4.10. And uh, it did seem, by the way, the, the 4 o'clock break seemed to be shorter. I, did I? Okay, so here she is. All right, here she is. Uh, okay, and now she is part of the, the, the lady I'm having on here now. She, she says, our, civiliz our civilization's coherence cannot surpass the health of the planet's ecology. Humanity is at a juncture in consciousness that commands a reorientation to ecology. We've exhausted experimenting with monoculture and competition with the commoditizing and privatizing of vital life force elements whose access is a need common to every species. Yeah, when the head of Nestle says that the right to water is not a, uh, is, it's not a fundamental right, uh, we all know we're in this together. Man and Earth thrive in a state of diversity and cooperation. We now are tasked with restoring the conduits that support this. She is Maggie Hines, a researcher, artist, and authorized rep for Holidium Labs. And uh, she was introduced to graphic clinical illustrations of the human aura early in life. Some call it their light bodies with Uri Geller's talent for spoon bending in her periphery. She recognized this energy inclusive anatomic model to be superior to the standardized medical model. And then, yeah, sugar. And then <laughs> sugar wants them. Uh, why does the commercial medical precedent, precedent embody such aggressive resistance to and dismiss a lot of an entire branch of understanding physicality. Over the last two and a half decades, she has witnessed multiple configurations of anonymous, of anomalous flying craft, often with others present, and has experienced a number of lucid, uplifting dream state scenarios that could be described as mass landings, mostly in the 90s and more recently. Hey, it sounds like our adventures out of Area 51. At this juncture, juncture she's collected many first-hand witness accounts of closer or personal engagements with these craft and has vetted innumerable reports by contactees and abductees, abductees uh, adding uh, bolstering fodder to her intangible testimony. She is Maggie Hines. Hi, Maggie. How are you, dear? How are you, John? Oh, what hi. a treat to hear it read that way. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry this was your promo. I know you asked me to watch your 12-minute uh, oh, production music hey. video. Well, flying by the seat of our pants here. Well, I, uh, there, that's why I've got my depends just cinched up tight. So, uh, so like I said, it depends on who's in the will. So, I, I, all right. So, you were led to an introduction that catalyzed the morphing of uh, what you call here your failed attempt at disownership into an unapologetic compulsive investigation from your voracious appraisal of Ernst uh, all right, so you're, you're an expert on water, sacred geometry, consciousness, inclusive physics, exopolitics, psyops, spiritual upliftment, and stewardship. And, uh, and Thunder says you, you are very highly educated uh, with a, a, a vast, most vociferous vocabulary. So um, tell me a little bit about how you got into uh, one of our, our sponsors now in the program is Holidium. And a lot of people may or may not realize kind of what that is and what it, what it does. Can you explain a little bit more about it to us? Uh, I am that mildly trepidation. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
the restoration, none less than the restoration of consciousness, of human consciousness and physical reality is my interpretation. And that's done by, and that's done how? And that's done how and done by what? Well, how? Are these, are these two, two okay, so let me, let me. <laughs> wait, for it, wait. Is that too big for you? We're talking because we're promoting red. I, uh, let's take, shall we, shall we talk about the reduced emissions device? Yes, it's yeah, that's, that's. just the flagship, it's the inroad to, it's the most commercial product. Right. Right. Everybody, everybody's got a car, everybody wants stuff for their cars. Absolutely. Most relatable, absolutely. Okay, so. How does it do it? How does it work? Uh. How does your toaster work? Okay, no, let, let, me, let me try. <laughs> let me try doing it this way. Uh, as I understand it, uh, what has been going on, and this is a, uh, this has been suppressed in a number of different ways. In Germany, they were finding that you could take basic holograms, and you could then infuse holograms into simple water. And by doing this, you could actually then turn. I mean, it's literally like a, a like a Christ, uh, uh, you know. Hey, Jesus, we're out of wine here. Do something with this water here and turn the water into wine at the at the at, at the wedding at Canaan. And um, and then, in essence, what I believe is happening is that is that they were discovering that they could actually manufacture all kinds of drugs and do all kinds of interesting things simply by infusing them with holograms, and it would actually change the molecular structure. Of the uh, of the water into into a drug into a, into a uh, uh, into a compound and as I understand it, what halidium is doing is that with these these holographically infused uh, stickers, really these uh, uh, you could actually put them on your your gas tank or you put them on your emissions device, and they seem to actually cut emissions of your car. Not not seem to, but have scientifically been proven, apparently. Uh, to actually cut the emissions of your uh, of your vehicle. Well, they grossly reduce or actually eliminate the toxic emissions, and it's not really a matter of elimination; it's rendering inert the energetic signature. So, what we're talking about is establishing a new vocabulary. It's an entirely uh, it's restoring a relationship to the properties of material reality. Um, which sounds exotic and out of the box, but everyone can relate to it because we're all being it and living it. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, well, we're just living in a hologram. And they bring that up because I don't, I, uh, discussing how does it work within the construct of that it's just a hologram, I don't think is very relatable. Like, so it's a hologram. How is that different from physical reality? How is that different from this is the chair and water is malleable? Okay, we can program water because that we're giving a holographic message. I don't pretend to grok the science. I'm the person that is infused with enough spiritual wherewithal that when the truth is in the pudding, when the sensation of coherence has been expanded, reestablished, illustrated, that works for me. We're living that. When you show me that you can literally expose the gas tank to a text or put a holographic, an ormet, a multi-dimensional ormet end state lace holographic sticker. There's something very key about end state, which opens the door to multi-dimensionality that is needed in this scientific graphing. Right. Not the mundane graphing. Right. So well look I've I've actually tested this myself. I mean I've I have a uh, a Ford Escape that's a that's a hybrid vehicle that actually has a uh, it's actually part, obviously, electric battery and, and part, uh, you know, four-cylinder engine. And uh, uh, I thought it was amazing because we actually had a, a, a small testing device with us at the time. And we actually ran it by simply putting this this uh, this holographic device on the, uh, I'm not sure where we put it underneath the car. I wasn't sure if it was the gas tank or the actually exhaust manifold or whatever else. 
Right. But I saw I saw with my own eyes. I saw that the emissions from the four cylinder engine part of the car uh, were vastly reduced. I mean, I'm talking about maybe sixty percent or so uh, were reduced after just putting this uh, uh, after just putting this holographic device, which is what we're now advertising here on uh, on Holidium. And actually, they're giving the device away. It's kind of an interesting way to do it because they're actually giving me a uh, uh, they're actually giving the device away for like a penny. I think, but you know, then you're paying, you know, you're paying more for the shipping and handling. Uh, so the whole thing is like, uh, well, it's, like, it's basically twenty bucks. It's like nineteen ninety six or something like that. An awareness raising campaign. Yes, yeah, so an awareness raising campaign that then shows. And let me, I'll, I'll really one brief thing. My uh, my uncle, Doctor Fred Bell, uh, built a. Well, I should really go into this. And he built a time machine in his backyard. When I was a kid, we played Doc Brown and Marty McFly. And he built this device. He was a he graduated the University of Michigan when he was fourteen, and was a NASA checker engineer and all that. And he built this four-story structure that I watched disappear twice. And we had to actually, well, then we had to drag Fred to the hospital because he was bleeding like out every orifice after we got it because he got put together backwards. But what he saw was is that by jumping into the future, what he described was is that everything. He said it was like being inside. Uh, a blueprint, like being inside, uh, being inside like a blueprint for a for a house where everything was purple, and everything was cut like a like an outlined construct. And so, in essence, one of the things that he discovered, and this is back in the 19, 1977, 78 or so, one of the things he discovered was that was that not only was the universe holographic, but that the universe as we know it was being created at the moment that we interacted with it. In other words. And that's one of the reasons why he got so messed up is because with the without the proper shielding, uh, he was being pulled into the future by by him being grabbed by what you would call the causal field, because uh, that's the one that's way out there. So so as we have seven chakras, each one of the chakras has seven chakras. So we've basically got like forty nine chakras, and what happens is you get sucked through into the future from the causal field first, and then got to kind of get put back together inside out. Uh, when you come back, but when uh, when he did this, and he jumped into the future, vibrating at the frequency of now, without altering his re his frequency to the frequency of where he was going or 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 then, uh, as I said, he saw he saw the entire thing as basically as a, as like a big purple diagram that hadn't been filled in, and then of course then he, he jumped back to regular time space, uh, discovering in essence that that the universe is not only a hologram but it's being created at the moment that we get that we interact with it. So instead of a big bang, it's kind of a big, I'm not even sure what it is. It's kind of a big bit we're creating reality when we when we launch into reality. So so the aspect of using holograms in a holographic universe to actually then program, we now know through through the work of uh, of, of Dr. Uh, Dr. Emoto that you can program water. So why won't you be able to program gasoline or why won't you be able to program vapors or fluids? Do you have any opinions? Uh, well, I, I promote the study of water. Yes. I think water is the most fundamental thing, and if you cut or not, period, water, 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 bug out of. And can you change it with these holograms? The nature of water? Absolutely. Water reflects the most immediate uh, change. Yes. It's instantly receptive, it instantly reflects consciousness. And it's, I would say mechanical instruction is a, ver a variation of consciousness. You can say, I love you, thank you to water, the full circuit, right? Masculine and feminine principles, and ring, projection, reception, has been um, repeated. Full spectrum, beautiful, all encompassing symmetry reflected in water, according to the water's work, but that's my understanding. Uh, but that's an in intention. Were there any, any anything else with the with the uh, I know with the Holidium stuff that uh, we're not just using it for cars. Have you seen some other magical things that you can do with these holograms? Ah, that word magic. Well, yeah. So Thunder Gary Thunder Pratt seems to understand this stuff better than anyone, and peeking under the carpet, looking at this humongous amalgamation of what's going on, he's fashioned actual solutions that are bogglingly effective and simple. And that includes 
every kind of solution remedy and every kind of dis-ease remedy. And they absolutely mean what I say, and they really looked into it. So, at the site right now available are Formis and State Matter Vortex, Integraton Vortex. I'm looking at my notes. This is all quite a rough draft. We're talking about life extension, cleaning water. Um, let's get more remedial. There's a card for Lyme disease, a card for weight management, a card of hologram, a signature. Could you, could you, first up, you, you need to speak up a little bit, Maggie, speak into the, uh, speak a little more into the phone. Uh, can these holograms, can you take big versions of these holograms and put them on, say, smokestacks of coal plants to maybe render their emissions inert? Are you trying to say yes? <laughs> uh, I think that would be more of a per-order situation. Okay. Well, we're going to have you on again. We just have a, we have a, a brief period of time here. Maggie, Maggie Hines, uh, any place people should contact you, Maggie? Trackingthunder.holidium.com. Trackingthunder.holidium.com. That's trackingthunder-holidium.com. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Thanks for joining us, Maggie. I really appreciate you having you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. All right. Once again, trackingthunder-holidium.